Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever, wherever you are watching this. My name is Marcus Octavius, and you're not exactly in the foxhole. What this is, is what I like to call Shore Leave Weekend. Um, <clears throat> this was an idea I had had going way back to when I first started with uh, the foxhole playlist. I was thinking about an entire weekend uh, just chock full of material and uh, just all sorts of things to throw at you guys if I felt like that things were going in a particular direction and based on to a lot of responses and things of that nature everybody seems to be all on board which is good for me uh the the, the purpose of this particular playlist 80s unknown when I first started doing the playlist one of the things I realized is that in the very beginning I was going to have a lot of music that did not meet the particular standards I had set for the Foxhole playlist, which was mostly geared towards alternative sounding or alternative based music, uh, everything ranging from you know DJ music to more uh, protest music, and of course your fair mix of uh, goth rock and related uh, genres of music therein. So I took a good long look and I said, well, I have some stuff here that I feel like is worth putting out there. And the purpose of this particular list, as it is for a lot of the lists I will do from now on, uh, they're called uh, Foxhole Special Assignments. And it's based around a certain theme or a certain genre of music that I feel like I don't hear on the radio. And, you know, radio nowadays is chock full of anything. If, it, if those of you have, like, digital radio, satellite radio, I'm sure you have all the fun in the world for those of us who are broke we have to do what we have to do and uh 80s unknown is basically taking a song or a particular artist that was popular once upon a time in the 80s and for whatever reason just is not very popular anymore and i feel like that's you know a shame considering you know music nowadays is such a varying degree of either good or not good so I decided to do that. Uh, as the weekend in a whole, uh, of course, tonight is the 80s unknown drop. Tomorrow night is uh, the regular Foxhole playlist. And I have something a little bit special in mind for that night. Uh, that will be Saturday night. And, of course, Sunday will be my class on Drum Circle Etiquette. So please keep your eyes out for that. <clears throat> One particular thing I'd like to announce is, and, and bear with me, this is going to take a little bit of explaining when I initially started the Foxhole playlist, it was done at a time when not just myself personally, but what well, we as a nation were going through the, what we thought huh, was the peak of the, was the beginning of the coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 to some, <clears throat> excuse me. And I found myself with a lot of music, no real DJ equipment, and a need to try to keep myself in the mix and stay active and keep doing things. At the time, I was on furlough from my day job for about a month. So I had all the time in the world to really devote to the Foxhole playlist to dig for music, to look for music, find music, and present it for you guys and for you to enjoy it. Since going back to work, obviously I said that I wanted to keep it going. And I really do enjoy it. And I don't want anybody to think I don't enjoy it. But time is obviously very, very limited. You only have so much time to, you know, eat, sleep, shower, and get ready for the next day. With that in mind, I wanted to announce that there would be no Foxhole playlist for July 4th weekend. I picked this weekend almost accidentally on purpose. Uh, I needed to take some time off to reevaluate some things, not just... Uh, find more music, which is always, you know, a fun task for a person such as myself, but also evaluate the channel in and of itself. You know, I'm looking to make improvements, not just in recording equipment, but also in a look and an aesthetic. I, I want this to become a thing. I want this to grow. I want it to blossom. I want it to grow. And I understand that pretty much it can't be this great big potential thing if you guys keep staring at my blankets. So... <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at some, some new technology, perhaps even some new programs to install. So I'm going to take the time to the, uh, the holiday weekend to sort of upgrade things, take a look at things, see what I can do better, 
and really improve the channel as a whole. The Foxhole playlist. Uh, there's more content coming. Uh, there are going to be recorded what I would call mini concerts, uh, little drumming exhibitions, things of that nature. But um, that, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it. It's not going to stop. It's just going to take a breather. Um, and I'm throwing this weekend at you to sort of satiate your need for for what, what I've been told is a sound ear for music. If you're looking for something to listen to, uh, I've already mentioned him a number of times. Dream Lehman, who is a friend of mine out of Asheville, North Carolina. He uh, DJs at the, uh, the 27 Club up there off of Patton Avenue, which is, of course, I believe it's still closed right now due to, well, obviously. Um, and he's put together, I think, a SoundCloud mix of different sort of music. And, and it's along the same lines of the stuff that I do for the Foxhole. Uh, it's probably geared a little bit more different, and it probably has a lot more unknown artists. But I will put his link right down here. He has uh, put out a new SoundCloud mix. Um, I listened to bits and pieces. It sounds great. Uh, so if, if you're looking for something to listen to on the fourth weekend, uh, take a look at him. Listen to him. If you want to follow him on Facebook, I don't know how he is about friends. Uh, he's probably going to kill me for mentioning this. But um, give that a listen to. I wanted to you know, pimp him out because he's always been very supportive of me. Um, and I want to be supportive of him in return. Now, to the playlist itself. I do have a couple of artists on here that you may have heard of that I wanted to shout out. And the first one is a gentleman that the BBC called the man with the golden voice, and that's Paul Carrick. Uh, he's a British singer-songwriter, and he's been around since the 70s. The, the thing about Paul Carrick that you find funny is that everybody's heard him, but nobody knows it. For a long time, and this is his words, he was considered a hired hand for most bands. He was lead singer on the song How Long by Ace. How long has this been going on, if you know that? Uh, a lot of people have heard of the band Squeeze. Uh, he sung lead on Tempted, which became a big hit for them. He was also the lead singer of the 80s super group if you want to call it that, Mike and Mechanics, which was uh, led by Mike Rutherford, who was the guitarist for Genesis. Uh, also, Phil Collins and things of that nature. Uh, in the early 80s, he released two solo albums that really didn't parlay into anything. But after he joined Squeeze temporarily to record Tempted and joined Mike and Mechanics and started having hits after hits, uh, he parlayed that into a third album. And that's sort of when things started to, to skyrocket for him as far as a soloist. Um, I believe the album is named One Good Reason, came out in 87. And I chose the hit uh, Don't Shed a Tear as that particular song. So there's one person. Patrice Russian is a particularly interesting R&B artist. She's had two top 40 hits. One of them is on the playlist, Forgets Me Not. A very talented uh, R&B artist plays six different instruments including the clarinet which to be perfectly honest I've never heard of um, and I mean no offense I've never really heard of a black person playing the clarinet but that's just me I'm just ignorant like that but we're all learning about being ignorant now aren't we uh, a lot of people have heard forget me nots uh, if you watch the movie men in black and you heard uh, the Will Smith theme song he sampled that song, almost beat, sound, everything. And it was that particular song. Um, she's recorded 16 albums, basically from the mid-70s on up to now. What I found to be very interesting is that she's made a sort of post-recording uh, artist career out of being a musical director, including she was musical musical director of the Grammys three times. So, good on her. Uh, but there you go, Patrice Russian. A lot of people know the name Lindsey Buckingham. Obviously, he was uh, the lead guitarist and one of the lead singers for Fleetwood Mac from 75 to 87, and then again from 97 to 2018. What a lot of people don't know is that he has six solo albums to his credit. Now, the thing about these particular albums is that they were not big hits. Obviously, if anybody has had a 
bomb solo uh, recording career out of Fleetwood Mac has been Stevie Nicks. But a lot of his albums have received a lot of critical critical acclaim. Uh, he's notorious for being a, uh, a studio hermit. Uh, the first solo album he had, Law and Order, he actually played all the instruments himself. So he's a very talented musician, very talented singer-songwriter. In fact, a lot of the 80s albums from Fleetwood Mac, I think Mirage, Tango in the Night, and maybe one other one he helped co-produce. So more than just a guitarist, more than just you know a great voice. He also has a very interesting guitar playing style you know most guitars they strum with a pick he actually does like a weird sort of pseudo banjo pick type style he actually plucks the strings as opposed to strum them and it's made for a very interesting sort of sound an almost country-esque sound to it but uh lindsey buckingham and finally college rock staples of the late 80s and early 90s the smithereens uh, and when you think of college rock, you think of uh, groups like Edie Brickell and the New Bohemians. And obviously one of the big college rock bands to make it big is R.E.M. Uh, they have 11 albums to their credit and have numerous soundtrack appearances, including uh, the White Castle Blues, which was featured on Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. If you can imagine such a thing. Uh, they've been... Uh, they started the band originally in 1980, recorded their first album in 86, and from what I understand, they're still touring and recording now. They even released a Christmas album um, many moons ago. So there you have it. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, stay tuned for this. Uh, sorry, stay tuned for tomorrow night when I drop my special edition of the Foxhole Playlist. And of course, Sunday, you're getting Drum Circle Etiquette Class. That will be a lecture series continuing. My name is Marcus Octavius, and enjoy Friday night.